It's just this simple. It's just this simple. God created in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. God formed man of the dust of the ground and then breathed his life. Job said there is a spirit in man. That's the breath of the Almighty. And man became a living soul. And you say, but Pastor, then, then what's wrong in the world? What's wrong in the government? What, what, what's wrong in my neighborhood? What's wrong in my house? What's wrong in my life? Why don't I feel fulfillment and joy and forgiveness and peace? Why is there so much turmoil? Because God loved you so much that He gave you the opportunity to choose against Him. How would He ever know that you really, really, really loved Him if He made you love Him? So instead He gives you the opportunity to love Him. You say, well, what kind of a God is this? Is it the kind of a God that Bill Maher talks about? That if there is a God, he's a cursing God, a smiting God, a blighting God. That's not our God. That's what we chose. We thought we could understand the difference between good and bad, right and wrong. We chose through our own minds to try to figure it out, to reason it out. And Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And from that moment, human persons have tried to act like their own gods. Your Bible says we've all gone our own way like sheep without a shepherd. But then, one cold night in Bethlehem, a child was born. A son was given and God said by his death I'll give you life again for his suffering I'll give you victory again for his tragedy I'll give you hope and so Jesus come all the way from heaven down God himself suffered, bled and died on a cruel cross. Why? Why would he do that? Why? Because he saw you today. He saw you hopeless and helpless, wandering and doing your best, but failing and searching. He saw you. He saw you. Right there in, in the middle of the crowd on the 49th row. The 12th person in. He saw you. And he said, I love you so much that I refuse to live without you. And so on a cross, he paid the price and the penalty for our rebellion against God. For God so loved you. Not some sissy love, not some roll your eyes like a dying calf kind of love. A love that walks into your tragedy and defeats every devil. A God that walks into your failure and gives you victory. A God that says, though you're guilty, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. There's only one kind of sin God can't forgive. Unconfessed sin. Because He loved you so much, He gave His only begotten Son. Hear me. Hear me because there's still a choice involved. 
He says, I set before you today, not your mom, not your dad, not your church. I set before you life, death, blessing, cursing, God, Satan, heaven, hell. And then says to you, choose. What a choice. What a God. What a victory. What a joy. What a hope. That whosoever would just believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? The next verse says, because God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world. God's not mad at you. <laughs> God's not mad at you. Now, that's not good news unless you realize he really should be. You'd be mad at you. But he's not mad at you. For God sent not his son to condemn you. If any man be in Christ, old things pass away and all things become new to him. I'm here to tell you today, you can go home a brand new man, a brand new woman, a new species of you that's never existed before. Hallelujah. For all you've done. Hallelujah. For all you've done. For all you've done. Hallelujah. For loving me when I was unlovable. For forgiving me over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Hallelujah for your mercy that says I don't deserve it, but I get it anyway. Hallelujah for your grace that extends far beyond my failure. Hallelujah. For all you've done. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world, that you, through him, might be saved. What does that mean? Rescued from yourself. Rescued from your way. That's always the wrong way. Your Bible says there's a way that seems right to men, but the end are the ways of death. Your Bible says that sin's pleasure. Sin has pleasure for a moment, but in the end, it bites like a serpent. The Bible says the first taste is good, but in the end, it's like a mouth full of gravel. That's not the way God intended for you to live. God intended for you to have joy in the middle of turmoil. God intended for you to have peace in the midst of the storm. God intended for you to have forgiveness and mercy and grace. And don't stand there today with your religious robes on trying to cover up the stench of your sin. Because your Bible says, if we say we have no sin, then we are liars. And the truth is not in us. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But right now God has apprehended me. God said, John 3, 16, that's enough. Just tell them, that's enough. For God, who cares who's against you? If God is for you, for God, so shall so abundantly, extravagantly, overwhelmingly, unconscionably loves you. That he made a way for you to come back to him. It would have been enough if he just said, I forgive you, now stay away from me. A woman said to me one time, well, I forgive you, but it'll take a while. No, no, no. Somebody else said to me, well, forgiveness is a process. Human forgiveness, but not God's forgiveness. He saw a woman who had three husbands and the one she was living with right then. 
What a hope. Might as well get real. She had three husbands. The guy she was with now wasn't her husband. Jesus didn't say, get away from me. He said, you're the reason I came. He said, if there was any less sin, any less failure, any less burden on the back of humanity, God didn't carry, create you to carry a burden. God created you to be set free and to dwell in righteousness in his presence forever. But just like Adam and Eve, if you choose to turn and walk away and say some other time, if you try to cover your sin, oh, what a generation we live in. What an excuse making generation. God doesn't want your excuse. God doesn't want, he doesn't even want your apology. He wants you to say, I'm a wreck. A lonely soul was I. Emptiness filled this heart of mine. I searched and I searched in vain for peace, real peace and happiness. But none could I find but emptiness and bitter tears. That's all the world could hold because I needed a savior for my soul. What will a man give? Your Bible said this life is like a vapor. It's seen for a moment and then it's gone. Your Bible says that man's life is like the grass. It grows up and fades away. I lay meditating before the Lord early, early this morning because my natural heart was overwhelmed, missing my sister who this past year I went to be with the Lord. I never had been on this planet without her. The world suddenly became a very strange place. And I started thinking, God said to me, how long did it seem like she was here? Just a moment. And he said, now, how long does it seem like she's been gone? And I said, forever. He said, that's what eternity's like. You're going to be with me forever. That's why your Bible says this. The sufferings of this present world are not to be compared with the glory that we are going to share. I want to tell you today. I know it's not chic. I know you won't read it in People Magazine or Us Weekly. I, but I can tell you, heaven is real. It's real. God is real. Whether Bill Maher likes it or not, doesn't change one thing about it. I thought of a man who ran an ad in a newspaper. He said, on Sunday morning at 2 o'clock, I'm going to be in such and so field. And I'm going to stand in that middle of that field and I'm going to blaspheme and I'm going to curse God. And if he's real, I beg him to strike me dead. So he went out in the field, cursed and swore and blasphemed. And then turned to everybody and said, see, I told you. He's not real. The little old grandmother, with those buns on top of her head, walked up to him and said, sir, you haven't proven anything. God doesn't always settle his accounts at 2 o'clock on our schedule. There will come a time when there will be a payday someday. And for some, he will say, enter in my good and faithful servant to the joys prepared for you from the foundation of the world and to those on his left hand. Depart! What words! What a tragedy! What words! What a tragedy! Depart from me! never knew into eternal darkness prepared for the devil and his angels I got good news for you today you never need to know what hell looks like you never need to know and you don't have to have hell on earth to go to hell in you can have heaven on earth to go to heaven in 
you can have the presence of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. I'm not talking to you about religion or going to church. I'm saying to you today boldly and bravely, do you know beyond any shadow of a doubt that if Jesus should come in the next five minutes, you're as sure for heaven as if you were already there. I pray not, but you may have laced your shoes for the last time. Somebody else may take them off. You may never get to that roast. You're not looking for death, but death is vigilant. It's looking for you. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, you want to say, I don't care if I've been in the church 50 years. I feel something in here. I feel the love of God reaching out to me. I, I've been trying to please God through religion and it's not working. I, I need to fall at the base of an old bloody cross and say, just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, O Lamb of God, I come. I'm telling you, some folks are going to get born again this morning. I mean pass from death to life. I'm talking about becoming a new creature in Christ. I'm talking about pillowing your head tonight with a full assurance. You're as sure for heaven as if you were already there. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to count to three. The love of God issuing forth toward you right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. On three, I want you to raise your hand. And by that, I want you to say, I can't figure this all out. That's my problem. I've been trying to figure it out. I, I just know today I feel something drawing me to God. And I don't deserve it. But I want God in my life. Truly God in my life. I want a relationship. I want to be free. Wow. I want to be free. I'm three. You raise that hand. Do it bravely and boldly. Nobody here but you, me, and God. God standing here saying life, death, blessing, cursing. God, the devil, heaven, hell. Time for you to choose. You've got to make your choice today. You say, well, I can wait till tomorrow. No, 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 no. That same Bible says tomorrow's promise to no one. Today is the day of salvation on three raise that hand do it right now eternity waits for no one i can't wait for you on three one two three raise that hand and leave it up bravely boldly bravely boldly bravely boldly just as quick as you raise that hand when i say three push people out of your way and come right here and meet me and let's pray come on come on everyone with your hand raised everyone with your hand raised Everyone with your hand raised. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be shouting. Every aisle is jammed. Hallelujah. Come on. Run to Jesus. Run to freedom. Run to victory. Run to peace. Run to blessing. Run to forgiveness. Run to mercy. are being broken. I'm telling you right now. I hear you. Holy Ghost said, folks that have been born again, about to get born again, again. 
No, I can feel some of you. You're cold inside. You're not on fire anymore. You don't witness anymore. You don't testify anymore. You haven't brought anybody to church in the last year. I'm telling you right now, there's a stirring of the power of God. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Run to Jesus. Forget who you are. Forget where you are. Come to the presence of God. Come now. Break the chains. You can be free. Hallelujah is the international word to praise God. Doesn't matter where you are, you say hallelujah. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Hallelujah for all you've done. He did it so you wouldn't have to. So you wouldn't have to. He did it so you wouldn't have to. All you have to do is receive what he did. He received your punishment, your guilt, your sin, your transgression, nailed him to the cross. But love held him there. He could have left. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. But he died alone for you, for me. We're about to pray. I'm about to be real religious. You ready? Everybody fold your hands like this. No, stop. You ready? Lift up your hands like this. Say, hey God. This is, this is, and then say your name. This is, do it again. Say it again. Hey God. This is, help. Forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Give me eternal life. I choose you. Not myself. I choose you. Not Satan. I choose you. Not my mind. Trying to figure it out. I choose you. You said you love me. And I receive it. You said you forgive me, and I receive it. You said you'd give me eternal life, and I receive it. You said you'd give me power to become a child of God, and I receive that power now. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am a new creature. The old me dies, and a brand new me goes home. This is it. I receive now the life of a child of God. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm going to make it. Now thank him like he ought to be thanked. Thank God for what is done in your life. Thank God for what is done in your life. Thank God for what is done in your life today. Washed you, cleansed you, forgiven you, 
given you eternal life, given you a hope and a future. We ought to tell the whole wide world. 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 Next Sunday morning, we're going to give people an opportunity again. Could be your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your nephew. But it won't if you don't bring them. God did not save you to go to church and be taught. That's not why he gave you eternal life. If that was the case, he'd have just taken you to heaven. He can teach you real good up there. He saved you to rescue a multitude around you in your sphere of influence. You need to get them in church next Sunday morning. And you need to be here tonight.